I want to get right to my first guest, Stephen Mnuchin, uh, the Trump campaign's national finance chairman and a member of Donald Trump's economic advisory council. Stephen, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm glad to have you. Uh, obviously, the speech well received uh, among uh, Republicans and Donald Trump backers. Uh, what's the kind of feedback that you've gotten from it today? I think extremely positive. I think people are very excited about the speech, and I clearly think it differentiates the Trump economic plan from the Clinton economic plan, which is very different. This is about pro-jobs and pro-growth, and uh, we're very excited to see the details and see the platform. Now, of course, there's still details to come. We know the brackets. We don't know how those brackets actually break out. Uh, the only criticism that I saw, at least from, from an economic point of view, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, they said you guys are on the right path. But they're still worried about a trade war. Uh, that's a central part of Donald Trump's uh, uh, economic plan platform and, and, let's face it, election platform. How concerned should they be? Because I did hear Donald Trump say that isolation is not an option and that he was in favor of trade. I read that also in the Wall Street Journal, and quite frankly, I was surprised they said that. So let me be clear. Donald Trump absolutely believes in free trade and fair trade, and this is not about creating trade wars. Trade is very critical to the growth of the economy, but it's also incredibly important that all of our foreign counterparts honor their agreement, and this is about fair trade and things that are good for the American worker. You would say, though, that Donald Trump is committed to fighting uh, you could even say tooth and nail, if you will, if, if uh, these partners don't want to, let's say, for instance, renegotiate NAFTA. He would be willing to walk away from it. He would also be willing to enact tariffs on, on China in particular. Well, again, let me just be clear on this. Again, if our partners don't honor the agreements and the agreements are not good for the American public, we'll be looking at renegotiating them. Well, in, in the case of China, there are issues with violations of the WTO that the Trump administration think needs to be enforced. And in the case of NAFTA, there's VAT taxes that are, are on the other side from Mexico that we believe are not good for the American worker and in effect create tariffs on things that we sell into Mexico where they don't have tariffs on things that are coming into the United States. Okay, so the, but the bottom line is, and, I, and I'm just trying to be clear on this, that you're, Donald Trump and his team, you guys are prepared to go all the way if Mexico and China don't blink. Again, I, I don't want to say this is all the way or not all the way. What we're saying is we believe in fair trade and we think that we'll negotiate agreements that are good for both parties. And what this platform is really about and what the speech yesterday was about is about a pro-growth platform, lowering taxes on businesses, large businesses and small businesses, and creating simpler taxes for individuals, especially for the middle class, and creating tax cuts for the middle class. So that's really what this platform is about and differentiating itself from the Clinton platform, which is business as usual. Some uh, are going to say that uh, not only do the middle class get tax cuts, but so do the very rich. And uh, of course, Hillary Clinton's camp will say that while someone making 50 grand may enjoy a two or $3,000 tax cut, if you will, uh, multimillionaires enjoy hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand dollar $400,000 tax cuts. In other words, you know politics of Emmy going to play a big role in this. What will the response be? And I think you'll see when we come out with the details of this plan, we're looking about something that's very fair and something that's focused on what we can afford vis-a-vis -vis the budgets. And I think what you'll see is, as it relates to the rich, there will be tax reductions, but those will be offset with reductions in various different uh, aspects of things that could be deducted to simplify this, lower marginal taxes, but creating something that's very fair across the board and not big tax cuts to the rich. Stephen, on child care, um, uh, there's uh, maybe people are quibbling, uh, maybe not, but again, uh, the idea that being able to deduct, that someone deducting their nanny is a little bit different than a, a maybe a lower working class woman who have, has a babysitter or something else and uh, may not be able to do the deductions, but perhaps could take advantage of it if it was a tax credit. I, I've been told there have been provisions put in place for that as well. That is, and, and again, when we come out with the details of the plan, you'll see that for people who can take advantage of the deduction, they can do that. For people who can't take advantage of the deduction, they'll be offsets against payroll taxes. And again, there'll be caps on this, so this is primarily designed for the working middle class who has child care and needs to be able to afford it. It's a very important part of the middle class tax program. 